Hi everyone, it's Lisa, the houseplant guru. Um, I want to talk to you today about amaryllis, right? So amaryllis, look at this one. This is Minerva. Whoops, right in the face. Isn't that gorgeous? I just started this one not too long ago, um, but it's really warm out here in the sunroom and humid and it just loves it and it grew like crazy. So let's talk about buying them first. Um, so this one, which is really cool, came in like a styrofoam thing that stretches so that it doesn't get damaged. The blog post I did the other day was about why we plant them sticking out of the soil. And one of the reasons is, no, well, the reason is, is that we don't want this water to set in the neck of this um, bulb. This is a bulb, like a daffodil or a tulip. So if it gets, so what's good, the, the, it's called red blotch is, is the disease that it can get. It's a fungus. It's uh, the botan not the botanical name, but the name of, of it is Pyronellae curtisi, formerly Stagnospora curtisi. Um, I don't know if I said those right, but isn't it refreshing that it's not just plant names that change, it's diseases that change the names. Just that's what these get. So by the fungus can enter through injury. So it's nice that this one was wrapped when I bought it so that it couldn't it wouldn't get injured, right? Because if it get injured, then that fungus, the spores could enter it and start um, ruining your plant. So what I said was buy the biggest plant you can or the biggest bulb you can, that you can afford. So this bulb is um, from our garden center and I think it was 15, might've been 16. Um, I've seen them upwards of like $30. If you buy them in a catalog and they come in a beautiful pot, they could be upwards of 50 or more dollars. Um, this little one, you can kind of see the difference in size. I, put, I paid $5 for this, which, and it came with this really awful soil, just it was solid peat moss. I do not recommend if you get a boxed mamorellus, and I did write a blog post about that. You can check it out on my website, thehouseplantguru.com. Um, I don't suggest that you use that soil. I throw it away and I make my own soil, which is nice and porous and has perlite and is way better for your plant. Um, I also recommend and it's just the way it is, that you only plant your, your bulb in a pot that is approximately an inch bigger around than the, than the, um, the bulb. So you can see on this one, I just planted this one last week, so this pot isn't much bigger than the bulb, and it is sticking out of the soil, about a third of the bulb is sticking out. It's kind of a long pot, because they have long root systems, and it's a big bulb, right? Um, so... Make sure you use really good, well-drained soil. Um, pick a pot that's only a little bit bigger than the bulb. Um, this one is already starting to grow. You've seen those waxed ones, which are kind of cool. They cut the bulb. I don't have a lot of roots on this one anyway. So they cut the roots off, they coat it in wax, and really everything this bulb needs for the first year is already inside this bulb. It's gonna grow. If I never planted this, it's gonna grow, it's gonna bloom. I'm sure you've seen them where they are in the box, and you see, or even in a bin, at the garden center and they're already blooming and they didn't you know and they're all curled up in the box so everything they need for the first year is in here so um, when you plant them I'm gonna plant this one that's that's growing I like to soak them this one you can tell the water's a little murky I was already soaking this one, or soaking the other one um, I'm just gonna set it in here and just let it sit there and let those roots soak and and get Full, uh, you know get a little bit um, more pliable not so crusty is that a good word not crusty but dry so I soak the roots first then I'm going to um, I always use a piece of oops I just dropped a screen just a screen and I put it over this one has a really big hole which is good you know I love drainage I don't plant a pot I don't like to plant plants in pots without drainage so I put that in there and then I'm going to fill it I'm kind of messy. It's okay. I'm messy. I can be messy out here. It's got brick floors. It cleans up very nice. It's really tile, so it just looks like brick, but it's not. So I'm going to fill that until and kind of make room for the roots. And then um, see how it's kind of it's sticking out. You want to leave a little bit of lip between, you know, leave some area between the, the lip of the pot and where the, you know, the soil or potting medium is so that you can, when you water it, it doesn't run all over. Yep, see, I'm making a mess. That's okay. Using my antique scoop. I love antique scoops. I have quite a few of them. Okay. So, kind of sticking out. 
Oops, it's not planted too deep. I don't know what that is. Um, there you go. Now I'm going to water it in well. And in a few weeks, I am going to have this fabulous. This one is actually called, oh, I hope I didn't mix that up. Oh, darn. Oh, yeah, this one's called Barbados. It's red. And then the one that, this one that doesn't, i got to put this back on. I borrowed this from my garden center. Um, I'm going to send it back. I just wanted to show you how the bulbs could come. Um, this is a pink one called Gervais. It's beautiful. So they come in all different colors, and um, they even come in little, little tiny ones. And this one, I don't remember what this one was, um, but you know, it's getting ready to bloom. Even though it was, you know, it was five dollars, that's that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, it's beautiful, and it it will get bigger and grow the next year. This will probably only have one flower stalk, where some of these bigger ones. See, this one has two. Has two. These are two flower stalks, and then these things in the middle. These are the leaves that are coming up, and that is what, when these are done, I kind of leave them. I cut the top off, the flowers, the spent flowers. I will cut those off, like at the top of the stalk. And I leave the stalk because it's green. So if it's green, it's photosynthesizing, right? So it's sending energy back to that bulb. That's the point. We want as much energy to get back in that bulb for next year as possible. And that's why those, as soon as these are done, you can cut them off. When they shrivel, cut them all the way down to the bulb. Meanwhile, those leaves are coming out. Um, you can take them outside for the summer, just really... Um, probably not in completely full sun, but um, you know, keep take them outside. Some people sink them into the ground because they kind of top heavy. That's why it's good to use a clay pot or something heavy so that these don't topple over because they get pretty top heavy. Um, and then you just let those leaves grow all summer long so that they are putting all the energy back into that bulb. So next year, around Labor Day, next year, September, they're going to start dying back or you're going to let them die back, kind of pull back on the water. Or just cut them off. It's up to you. Cut the leaves off and let them rest for a while. In like a 55 degree area, you know, place, maybe in the basement, dark, cool, um, until you want to start watering them again and when you want them to bloom. So maybe you don't want them to bloom for Christmas. If you do, you're going to start them in mid-November, beginning of November, mid-November. If you don't, maybe you want them in the depths of January, the depths of winter, when it's kind of dark. You want some flowers. So then wait till, you know, December or even January to plant them up so you have flowers later. So um, what does amaryllis mean? Amaryllis means star. So obviously this is a star. It means it actually means glitter, glitter, sparkle. And this is sparkly, star, shines like a star, right? Um, the story behind the amaryllis bulb is, and then the actual botanical name is hippiastrum, which means horse star, or um, they say it refers to the buds kind of look like horses heads. I don't get where these people come up with this stuff, but whatever. It's sparkly, it's a star, there you go. Um, so the, the, uh, Virgil wrote a poem about Amaryllis and it's about a girl that was trying to impress a guy. She really loved him. So she went to his house every night, knocked on the door and stabbed herself in the heart with a golden arrow for 30 days. I don't get it. Um, he must've been something. And, uh, the blood that spilled out, you know, grew into the beautiful, usually the red Amaryllis. So that's a story that someone came up with that's kind of cool. It's romantic. Um, these come from South America, Chile, Peru. So they, you know, they like it warm and humid. That's why it's doing so good out here. So um, in conclusion, buy the biggest bulb you can. You're going to get a lot more bang for your buck, more flowers, more flower stalks. Um, if, you, if you, you know, the $5 one's not bad either. It's great. You can find them on clearance right now. And um, it's going to get bigger. The bulb's going to grow every year. Just make sure that you're fertilizing it like your regular house plant all summer long. Keep those leaves up growing so that they're putting all their energy back into making a bigger bulb and putting the energy back so that you're going to get more flowers next year. Um, and I've heard that the wax ones, you can regrow roots on them. I have not tried it. Let me know in the comments if you've tried that, if you've got them to come back. Um, and also, I, you know, I've, I've got lots of um, blogs, blog posts on my website, thehouseplantguru.com about amaryllis, but if you want a some eye candy book, this book is from, it's an older book um, by Star Akenga, and it is just gorgeous. You could put it on your coffee table. It is just full, I'm gonna do it, full of gorgeous, gorgeous pictures of amaryllis, all different kinds, how she grows them. Beautiful, beautiful book called Amaryllis. Um, so that's what I have to say. Um, Buy the biggest bulb you can, buy a healthy bulb um, that's firm, not soft. Um, only put it in a pot that's a little bit bigger. Uh, it likes to be a little root bound, a little snug in the pot. 
and um, give it water and then wait for the leaves or it's for the you know for it to start growing before you give it more water and you in about six to eight weeks you are going to have a beautiful beautiful bouquet of flowers and I'm also this one's gonna grow and be done and then look I have another one coming up so I'm gonna have flowers for a really long time this is a great gift for someone who's a shut-in especially during this COVID time um, you can watch practically watch this thing grow every day it just grows and you're gonna have to turn it as soon as it grows to the light keep turning it every day because it will you can tell this one's not straight either so um, all right I hope you have a great day find an amaryllis bulb probably find some on clearance right now which is great um, plant it up in some good potting medium not the, if it's in a box throw that stuff out and in a few weeks you are going to enjoy these gorgeous gorgeous flowers okay you guys have a great day and happy planting.